what I forgot to mention by way of introduction to this section is that even though the Helix is a, is a therapeutic community, there is a real fringe movement in what you might have gathered in, the, in this cult. Uh, people who actually really want to secede from the union, there are a bunch of liberals and they kind of think that the, the Helix is really kind of a dissident movement and incidentally it finally ends up getting patronized by uh, North Korea who also thinks that the cult is a, is a dissident movement and so they think that they're going to be able to sow the seeds of this kind of, uh, of, of real strife in the country and destabilize the government and, and all of that. Um, now, you guys, um, you think you came to see me tonight, but you're wrong. <laughs> what you really came for, that would be my dad. You came for swag. <laughs> <laughs> so, at my, at my book party in New York, there was about a, a, my book launch, there was about a hundred of us, and I had all of them holding these flags in this kind of, sort of like an amphitheater, and they were all waving these things like a bunch of lunatics, and I was like, wow, I'm a cult leader. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had made three kinds. One says lonely, one says estranged, and one says alienated. And <laughs> apparently, um, there was a lot of bartering going on, and my, my new favorite overheard conversation is, do you want to trade with me? I'm actually more estranged than alienated. <laughs> so, if you needed any kind of inducement to actually purchase this novel, first person to buy a novel gets their choice of a lonely flag, or perhaps more enticing, a home custom-made CD, which I was told is very 90s apparently, but <laughs> a custom-made CD of songs um, whose title has the word lonely in it, or some <laughs> derivative thereof. Um, the song selection includes, and perhaps in, I actually might be giving you the entire song list, uh, Tired of Being Alone, Lonelier Than This, How to Fight Loneliness, Lonely People, Song for Lonely Giants, Long Gone Lonesome Blues, Alone Again, Nobody Wants a Lonely Heart, Saturday Night's the Loneliest Night of the Week, you're going to make me lonesome when you go. I'm lonely, but I ain't that lonely yet. Which is the most optimistic song of the world. <laughs> Speed of the Sound of Loneliness, Have You Ever Been Lonely, Being Alone, A Bunch of Lonesome Heroes, I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry. In Portland, I managed to get someone to buy the novel just because he wanted the CD. <laughs> it's like, that is the most Portland. awesome set of priorities I've ever heard. Like, yes, but, but do you have no, you know, do you have lonely girls on it? <laughs> I said no. So um, after we're done sort of chatting, um, whoever's the second person to buy a book will get what's left over. <laughs> all right, I'm happy to take any kind of, of questions. Really, I can talk about anything at all. Um, so far in this book port, a lot of people have asked me, like, are you lonely? <laughs> I feel like that's a kind of, there's a, that's a lose-lose position for me to be in. No answer is going to, going to work for that. So feel free to just, you know, pose anything you like. I can talk about this book, I can talk about any books, I can talk about North Korea. <laughs> in in uh, Austin, somebody said to me, like, it wasn't I excited that North Korea was really in the news a lot now because it was probably doing a lot to help publicize my novel? <laughs> and I thought, um, no. <laughs> They're all going to bomb us to smithereens, but you know, great if that sells another copy, you know, ten copies of my book. <laughs> there are no bad questions. Yes, ma'am. Did you model your cult after any notable cults? Did I model your cult after any notable cults? Um, no, yeah, well, yes and no. Mostly no, I think. There are not that many um, therapeutic communities out there. I mean, there's there's Est, and there's the Way. And um, there was RC, and that was probably the one I really looked at reevaluation or co counseling. Um, the guy who started that, Harvey Jenkins, was also part of Dianetics and um, eventually Scientology. But in RC, you know, co counseling basically two people get into a room together and they start um, analyzing each other to the point of, of breakdown. And I thought, oh, that's a useful model. So, uh, the, the model for the helix is that people are supposed to come together. I mean, there's all this speed dating that happens, which I don't, you know, I don't know, I guess that is cultish. Um, but there's a component of the cult that encourages people to come together and confess to each other at a very high level. The idea being that if you disclose to someone at a high level, they will disclose to you in return at the same high level. Thus, intimacy is forged. Um, it's never worked for me, personally. I disclose to someone at a high level and they run away screaming. <laughs> um, but I mostly, I looked at, I looked at RC was, was the big one. I mean, you know, cults in general, orthodoxy in particular, is really boring to write about. 
because orthodoxy, well, it's one thing and one thing only. I'm a fanatic. I'm a fanatic. Yeah. You know, you get maybe three pages out of that, and, you know, there's no, all arrows are pointing in one direction, which is basically a recipe for massive boredom for me and for anyone reading about it. So I definitely wanted to kind of create a cult that had not just something for everyone, but that was complicated, you know, that wasn't just one thing and, and one thing only, so that it would seem sort of interesting and, and malleable and um, versatile in so much, in so far as it could be something different to everyone, which is why there is this fringe movement. Some people really think that the movement is about revolt. It's why, the, you know, there's a lot of people living in these communes all over the country, and they're all just kind of having sex with each other, and they seem to have forgotten their friends and family, and they've given them all their money, and typical cult-like uh, behavior. And then there's people who are just trying to, you know, go on speed dates and, you know, find a boyfriend and be, you know, sort of happy in their in their lives. So, um, you know, a, the cult really kind of has a, a wide offering. Mm -hmm. Sounds kind of nice, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Did you start with the thought of, of uh, addressing loneliness, or did you just try to find something for a cult to do? Well, I'm kind of fixated on loneliness, uh, alas. Uh, I mean, it is kind of a preoccupation of, of mine. Apparently, my first novel is all about loneliness, uh, unbeknownst to me. I guess that's what I'm doing from now on. Every book's about loneliness. <laughs> um, but no, originally, um, I, I was started writing the book in 2007, and I was still really appalled by what had happened in 2000 and 2004. And I had this idea, in fact, that the half the country, the, the half I like, would secede. And what would that be like? And so originally, you know, the cult was actually literally a secessionist movement. And I lost interest in that in about two minutes, though, because, you know, a kind of political condition of fracture and schism just seemed so much less fertile than... Um, kind of interpersonal or personal conditions of estrangement, um, which itself is obviously political. You know, I mean, estrangement to me, private estrangement or domestic estrangement seems to me hugely political in the way that everything personal is political. So immediately I just got more interested in the kind of therapeutic aspect of all of this and did, dropped all the politicized, the ex explicitly political stuff became the fringe part of the movement and then I decided to tackle loneliness in a, in a new way. But at the same time, I had watched, I don't know how many of you guys saw this thing on 60 Minutes in 2007. There was a piece about this guy, Joseph Dred Dresnock. I think it's, you know, ring any bells as the, um, he was an American soldier who crossed the DMZ in 1963. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was, um, for those of you who don't know that story, he was, um, about to be court-martialed because he wanted to spend the night kind of in town with his ladies and his superior was like, I don't think so. And he had just gotten divorced and he was pissed off and he's like, ah, hell with this, I'm gonna walk across a minefield to North Korea, which is, as, which is bad. And then nobody heard from him again for you know 40 years or something. No one knew what had happened to him. And while he was there, apparently he had met three other defected soldiers. So there are these four American GIs living in North Korea, all of them, willingly cross the DMZ because they, I mean, how, how isolated, emotionally isolated do you have to be to cross the DMZ looking for something? I mean, if I got fixated on these four people, and in North Korea in particular, which is, you know, it's the Hermit Kingdom, it's the last, you know, dark spot on the map, so I, you know, I started to put this whole thing together, it was like, you know, how can I look at paths towards and away from estrangement in these kind of multiple ways? Um, but yeah, basically, I started with. <laughs> <laughs>